Hello students, how are you? Hope you are hale and hearty. A warm welcome to our channel. It is an initiative to boost the confidence of the students who are going to take the NEET exam amidst this crisis. As a part of this venture, we have prepared a PowerPoint preparation based on the NCERT Class 11 Biology book. Unit 2 Structural Organization in Plants and Animals Chapter 5 Morphology of Flowering Plants What is meant by morphology? Morphology is a term that describes the outward structures of a plant and its plant body. First and the foremost thing we are going to learn about the root system in detail. The root systems are divided into three categories. Number one, tap root system. It is present in dicotyl donor's plants. For example, mustard plant. Next comes the fibrous root system. It is present in monocotyl donor's plants. Example, wheat plant. The third one is adventitious roots. What do you mean by adventitious roots? Adventitious roots are those roots which arise from parts of a plant other than the radical. For example, here I have given a snapshot of a banyan tree. Here, the top roots of the banyan tree have originated from some other parts other than the radical. So, for adventitious roots, banyan tree is a very good example. Now we are going to see the main functions of the root. The first one is absorption of water and minerals. As we all know that the roots suck water and minerals from the soil. Second one, providing anchorage to the plant parts. The roots give full support to other plant parts, the stem, the leaves, the buds, the flowers and other things. The third one is roots store reserve food material. We all know that we consume carrots, radish, beetroot like that. These are examples of roots where food material is stored. The fourth one is synthesis of plant growth regulators. In short, they are called as PGR. These plant growth regulators are also get synthesized in roots. Next one is parts of a root. Look carefully the diagram which is given aside the sentences. It has been divided into four parts. From the bottom we come across the root cap. Then comes the region of meristematic activity. Then comes the region of elongation. Then we find root hairs all around the root. Then we see the region of maturation. So these are the parts which are present in a root. Root cap, region of meristematic activity, region of elongation, then comes the region of maturation, then root hairs. Now let us move on to the Modification of roots. Prop roots. 
as we have already learnt it, they are found in banyan trees. Then comes the stilt roots. These stilt roots are found in crops like maize and sugarcane. As we all know that, we could see the stilt roots underneath the stem of the sugarcane at various parts. They are known as stilt roots. Then come the pneumatophores. In other words, breathing roots they are called. These breathing roots or pneumatophores are found in plants like rhizophora. Generally, these kind of plants are found in marshy areas where water stagnates all around the air. So the roots underneath the soil, they find it difficult to breathe oxygen. So they come up out of the soil, as you see in this picture, to respire oxygen from the air. Then comes the stem. The stem develops from the plumule. You know the parts of a seed. In the seed we come across radical and plumule and all. From where does the root originate? It comes out from the part called radical. Similarly, the stem develops from the part of the seed known as plumule. Next thing is, in the stem, we also can see nodes and internodes. Throughout the body of the stem, we find nodes and the length in between each and every successive nodes or consecutive nodes is termed as internode. So the stem bears nodes and internodes. The third one is, stem is generally green when young and become woody and dark brown later. As we all know that, we see green plants, tiny plants all around our houses and in our ambience, they look so green. But when a small plant grows into a big tree, it develops barks all around its body and no longer it looks green in color because it has become woody and it looks very dark brown in color. The main functions of the stem First one is spreading out branches, bearing leaves, flowers and fruits. We see branches come out from stem of a plant and also these branches bear leaves, flowers and fruits. The second function of the stem is Conducting water, minerals, and photosynthates. Roots absorb water and minerals from the soil. At the same time, the stem is the one which transport these things from the bottom to all parts of the plant. It's an upward movement, when, but when it comes to the case of photosynthates, what is meant by photosynthesis? The food which is synthesized by the process of photosynthesis. This time and all you would have come across in your earlier classes. The plant synthesizes its own food with the help of water from the soil and from the sunlight from the sun through a green color pigment called chlorophyll present in its leaves. They are called photosynthates, in otherwise food. The stem transports 
this food material or photosynthesis from the leaves to the root so in one way it's a downward movement the third one is storing of food in some cases food is also stored in the stem for example in the case of sugarcane we consume the stem part of the plant fourth function is supporting the plant as the root props the plant the stem supports the plant fifth one protecting the plant if the stem is not so strong due to wind and other factors the plant may get broken so the stem also protects the plant fifth one is for vegetative propagation as we all know that other than sexual reproduction in plants some plants also propagate or they reproduce their young ones by means of vegetative propagules namely bulbils offsets runner etc so in some cases stem also helps in vegetative propagation for example if you want to grow a drumstick plant we no longer need to sow a seed or anything else we just cut a stem of this plant and plant it in the soil in a very few days it grows into a new plant it's a very good example of vegetative propagation then we see modifications of stem there are so many modifications of stem that we come across in our day to day life why do stems modify themselves for various purposes the first one is they are modified to store food example potato the underground stem ginger in its rhizome food is stored turmeric jamikan and calacasia in these plants food is stored in their stems second one is modified to survive unfavorable conditions in plants like grasses and all though the climatical conditions are worse they remain as they are till they get the favorable conditions when they get favorable conditions the plant grows once again for that purpose stems help them out third one is modified as tendrils to climb example gourds cucumber pumpkins and watermelons we may come across a variety of climbers like cucumbers pumpkins watermelons bottle gourds ridge gourds bitter gourds and you name it a lot of things are there so if you look closely in this picture you can see the tendrils they help them to climb on another supports a twig or something else fourth one is modified into woody straight and pointed thorns example citrus bougainvillea in these plants it's a kind of defense mechanism played by those plant parts in order to avoid browsing animals like goats and other cattle these stems get modified into pointed thorns in citrus fruits 
like oranges, lemons and other things, we find a lot many of thorns present on the stems so that cattle cannot go and eat away them. Next one is, we are going to see the next part of the plant goes by the name, the leaf. Here, there is a structure of a leaf. We can see so many things. First, the prominent part of a leaf is nothing but the lamina. The broad, flattened structure of a leaf is called the lamina. Then comes the petiole, the joint which joins the leaf lamina to the main stem, which is called as the petiole. The place where the petiole joins the main stem is known as leaf base. And we also can see a small outgrowth at the node where the petiole is joined to the main stem that is called the stipule. And also we can see a small axillary bud over there. And there are quite a new terms which we come across but for these terms there are no diagrams given in the textbooks presented by NCERT. First one is sheath. What is meant by a sheath? Here you see a stem over here. Around the stem a leaf like structure which encloses the stem that is known as sheath. The second one is pulvinous. What is meant by pulvinous? In the petiole where it connects the main stem, I mean at the leaf base, the petiole is somewhat bulged. That part is known as pulvinous. Then comes the term called venation. What is meant by venation? The arrangement of veins and veinlets in the lamina of leaf is termed as venation. What do you mean by veins and veinlets? As we humans have veins and arteries in our body, the leaf lamina also has got veins. If you pluck a leaf of any kind and look closely at its lamina, you could find a straight line running all across the lamina. That line-like structure is called as a vein and from that vein so many other lines are branched out. They are called as veinlets. Based on this venation, the leaves are categorized into two. In other words, there are two types of venations. One is reticulate venation and another one is parallel venation. What is meant by reticulate venation? When the veinlets form a network, as we see in the case of this leaf, then the venation is termed as reticulate venation. As it forms a network kind of thing. This type of reticulate venation is found in dicotyl donors plants like peas and pulses. Then comes the parallel venation. When the veins run parallel to each other, then the venation is termed as parallel venation. This type of venation is found in the fronds of a coconut tree and the leaves of a plantain tree. In other words, to make it simple, this type of parallel venation is found in monocotyledonous plants like paddy, wheat and other grains. Now we are going to learn in detail about the types of leaves. 
leaves are categorized into two a simple leaf and a compound leaf a leaf is said to be simple when its lamina is entire look at this lamina of this leaf its lamina is complete the second one is when incised the incisions do not touch the mid rib let me explain to you when it is cut the cuts do not touch the mid rib of the leaf lamina then such type of leaves are termed to be simple leaves then comes the compound leaf a leaf is said to be compound when the incisions of the lamina reach up to the mid rib breaking into a number of leaflets here in the second picture you can very well notice that the incisions of the lamina in other words the cuts of the lamina reach up to the mid rib breaking a leaf like structure into a number of leaflets instead of a lamina which is entire as we saw in the previous case here on the both sides of the mid rib we could see a lot of leaflets are found then in both simple and compound leaves a bud is present in the axil of petiole in compound leaves a bud is not present in the axil of leaflets what do they mean is in both the cases either it is a simple leaf or a compound leaf a bud is present in the axil of petiole it means the place where the petiole of a leaf joins the main stem an axil is a bud is present in both the cases but in the case of a compound leaf a bud is present in the axil of a petiole but a bud is not present in the axil of leaflets in the second picture you could see a lot of leaflets they are joined to the mid rib the places where the leaflets join there we don't find any buds this is what they mean then types of compound leaf as we all saw already leaves are categorized into two a simple leaf and a compound leaf again there is a variation in the compound leaf itself a compound leaf is again divided into two kinds one is pinnately compound leaf another one is palmately compound leaf what is meant by a pinnately compound leaf a number of leaflets are present on a common axis called rachis in other words mid rib then it is termed as a pinnately compound leaf now have a look closely at this picture it seems like a leaflets of a neem tree are a curry leaf tree here we could see a number of leaflets present on a common axis this axis is known as rachis in other words mid rib example neem leaves curry leaves etc then comes the palmately compound leaf the leaflets are attached at a common point here also we could see a lot of leaflets but present in a different manner unlike in the case of a pinnately compound leaf where the leaflets are present on a common axis all through it here the leaflets are attached at a common point it means at the tip of the petiole 
not all along the petiole but at the tip of the petiole. Example, the leaves of a silk cotton tree. Then comes the term called phyllotaxy. What is meant by phyllotaxy? Phyllotaxy is the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch. This term explains the pattern in which leaves are arranged on a stem or a branch. Based on this, there are three types of phyllotaxies that we are going to learn in this lesson. They are number one, alternate type of phyllotaxy, number two, opposite type of phyllotaxy, number three, world type of phyllotaxy. What is meant by an alternate type of phyllotaxy? In this pattern, a single leaf arises at each node in an alternate manner. Look at this picture carefully. Here you could easily see the way the leaves are branched out. They are in an alternate type. When there is a leaf at a particular node, the other leaf that originates from in a different direction and also at a different place on the stem. This type of phyllotaxy is known as alternate type. This type of phyllotaxy is found in plants like china rose, mustard and sunflower. Then comes the opposite type of phyllotaxy. In this case, a pair of leaves arise at each node and lie opposite to each other. Unlike in the previous case, here a pair of leaves arise at each node. In the alternate type of phyllotaxy, a single leaf arises from a, at each and every node. Here at each node, a pair of leaves arise. And also they arise in the opposite manner. Both the pair of leaves are present in opposite directions. For this example is Calotropis. Third one is world type of phyllotaxy. In this type of phyllotaxy, more than two leaves arise at a node and form a whorl, a circle-like structure. This type of phyllotaxy is known as world type phyllotaxy. Then comes the modification of leaves. As we have already studied, stems get modified for various purposes. Similarly, here leaves of a plant also get modified for various purposes. Number one, tendrils. When leaves are converted into tendrils for climbing purposes, these structures are called tendrils. Example, peas. Second one is spines. When leaves are converted into thorn-like structures for defense, then these structures are termed as spines. It is very well observed in desert plants. Then leaves also get modified to store food, storage of food. The fleshy leaves are converted to store food. We all come across the common examples like onion and garlic. The edible part of these 
I mean onion and garlic are nothing but leaves stored with food. The fleshy leaves of onion and garlic are consumed by us. The fourth one is petioles synthesize food. As we all know that leaves only synthesize food but in some plants even the petioles synthesize food. Do you know the reason? In some plants the leaves are so small. So in this case photosynthesis is not at all possible. So the petioles in these plants expand, become broaden and synthesize food. Example Australian plants. The next one is insectivorous plants. These and all you know pretty well. Pitcher plant, sun flame. In all these cases, the leaves become specialized structures in their structure and also in their color so that they could attract insects. They have developed a specialized mechanisms to attract and trap insects as in the case of sun trap plants. They attract and they trap the insects and they consume the nitrogen which is present in their body to survive. Then comes the inflorescence. What is meant by inflorescence? The arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is termed as inflorescence. The arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is not at all same in all the plants. They differ from plants to plants. So as per the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis, the inflorescence is divided into two types. One is racemos type, another one is cymos type. What are the characteristics of racemos type? The main axis continues to grow. The main axis continues to grow from which the florets, I mean the small flowers, come out. Second characteristic is the flowers are born laterally in an acropetal order. So in the case of a racemose type inflorescence, the flowers are born laterally in an acropetal order. What is meant by acropetal order? Let us discuss it later. Then comes the cymose type. Here Unlike the racemos type, the main axis terminates in a flower. In the case of a racemos type, the main axis continues to grow. The florets, I mean the tiny flowers are found only all along the main axis. But here, the main axis doesn't continue to grow, but it terminates in a flower. The second characteristic is the flowers are born in a basi petal order. In racemose type, it is acropetal order. In cymose type, it is basi petal order. For these terms only, here we have given the pictures of some flowers. The first one you see, the first one is a very good example of racemose type, and the second one. Is a very good example of cymose type. I mean, this flower, I mean, this inflorescence is an example of acropetal order, and this one is an example of basi petal order. Now, let us see in detail what is meant by acropetal order. In this arrangement,
the new flowers and buds are at the apex the older flowers are at the base here as you see in this case the new flowers and buds are found only at the apex the mature grown up older flowers which are going to wither due to its maturity are all found only at the base this type of arrangement is known as acropetal order then comes the basipetal order in this arrangement the older flowers are at the apex have a close look at this picture here the old and matured flowers which are bloom very nicely are at the apex and we could see a few tiny buds are located at the base of the flower so the new flowers and buds are at the apex this type of order is known as basipetal order here two simplified diagrams are also given for acropetal and base petal in this you see the tiny buds and small flowers are located at the apex i mean at the tip of the plant but in this case in the second one it's a example of basipetal order here you could see the mature old and large flower is located at the apex and the small comparatively small and new flowers and buds are located at the base so this diagram represents the basipetal order hope you all enjoyed watching this video thank you for watching this ppt subscribe this channel and share this video without fail to your kid and kin click the bell button for more educational videos of this kind